Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The curtain will rise shortly. The lads and I have had a meeting in the bar, decided it's first class family entertainment. But if it goes on beyond half past ten, it's self indulgent. Pass it on. <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm on my own tonight, don't mind if I join you. <coughs> Hello, bird boot. Where's Higgs? I'm standing in. Where's, Where's Higgs? Higgs? Every time. What? It is as if we only existed one at a time, combining to achieve continuity. <laughs> I keep space warm for Higgs. My absence confirms his presence. His presence confirms my absence. His absence precludes mine. When Higgs and I walk down this aisle together to claim our common seat, the oceans will fall into the sky and the trees will hang with fishes. Where's Higgs? The very sight of me with a complimentary ticket is enough. The streets are impassable tonight. The country is rising and the cry goes up from hill to hill. Where is Higgs? Perhaps he's dead at last or trapped in a lift somewhere, or succumbed to amnesia, wandering the countryside with his trouser cuff stuffed full of ticket stubs. Yes. Yes, well, uh, I didn't bring Myrtle tonight. Not exactly her cup of tea, I thought, tonight. Over her head, you mean? Well, no, I know. It's sort of a, a thriller, isn't it? Is it? Well, that's what I heard. A who killed thing? No, we'll leave the room. I suppose so. Underneath. <sighs> Underneath? It's a whodunit, man. Look at it! <laughs> Has it started yet? Yes. Are you sure? It's... it's a pause. Can't start with a pause. <laughs> if you want my opinion, it's total panic back there. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Higgs tonight, then? It will follow me to the grave and become my epitaph. Here lies Moon, the second string. Where's Higgs? Sometimes I dream of revolution, a bloody coup d'etat by the second rank. Troops of actors slaughtered by their understudies, magicians sawn in half by indefatigably smiling glamour girls, cricket teams wiped out by marauding bands of twelfth men. I dream of champions chopped down by rabbit punching sparring partners while eternal bridesmaids turn and rape the bridegrooms over the sausage rolls, and parliamentary private secretaries plant bombs in the minister's humper. Comedians die on provincial stages, robbed of their feeds by mutely triumphant stooges, and march an army of assistants and deputies, the right-hand men, the runners-up, storming the palace gates, wherein the second son has already mounted the throne, having committed regicide with a croquet mallet. Stand-ins of the world, stand up! <laughs> Sometimes I dream of Higgs. Have a chocolate? <laughs> what kind? Uh, black magic. No thanks. Oh, well, I'll give you a tip then. Watch the girl. You think she did it? No, the girl watch her. What girl? Well, you won't know her. I'll give you a nudge. You know her then, do you? What's that supposed to mean? I beg your pardon? F for God's sake, Moon. What's the matter with you? You could do yourself some good, you know, spotting her first time out. She's new, from the provinces. Yes, going straight to the top. I don't want to put words into your mouth, but a word from us, and we could make her. I suppose you've made dozens of them like that. I'll have you know I'm a family man devoted to my homely but good-natured wife, and if you're suggesting I, I'm sorry, I, a man of my scrupulous integrity uh, no, no. falsely besmirched... Is that her? Oh, don't be absurd. I wouldn't be seen dead with that old... Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Drudge the Help. Hmm. We interrupt our program for a special police message. The search still goes on for the escaped madman who is on the run in Essex. <gasps> Essex! 
County police, led by Inspector Hound, have received a report that the man has been seen in the desolate marshes around Muldoon Manor. The man is wearing a darkish suit with a lightest shirt. He is of medium height and build and youngish. Anyone seeing a man answering to this description and acting suspiciously is advised to phone the nearest police station. That is the end of the police message. So that's what they say about me, is it? What? Oh, I know what goes on behind my back. Sniggers, slanders, holding in the corner innuendo. What have you heard? Uh, nothing. Tittle tattle. Tittle, my dear fellow tattle. I take no notice of it. The sly envy of scandal mongers. I can afford to ignore uh, them. I'm a respectable married I man. Incidentally... Walter Arthur Duck's back, I assure you. Uh, who was that lady I saw you with last night? How dare you? How dare you? Don't you come here with your, your slimy insinuations. I'll have you know my wife uh, Myrtle understands perfectly well that a man of my critical standing is obliged occasionally to mingle with the world of the footlights simply by way of keeping au fait with the I, I never implied... I, I find it simply intolerable to be vilified and pilloried in the stocks of common gossip. I'm sorry, I... I have nothing to hide. Why, if this would reach the ears of my beloved I, Can Myrtle. I have a chocolate? What? <laughs> oh. Oh, yes, yes, my dear fellow, yes, yes, let's have a chocolate. Oh, yes. <clears throat> yes, uh, which one do you care for? Uh, hmm. Uh, cherry? Strawberry? Hmm? Coffee cream? Uh, Turkish delight? I'll have, uh, Montelima. Oh. Sorry. Uh, pistachio fudge? No. Uh, hickory nut praline? Nectarine cluster? Mm. Chateau Neuf de Papay? 55 Cracknell? <laughs> um, uh, afraid not. <laughs> Caramel? <laughs> yes, all right. Thanks very much. Incidentally, old chap, I, I'd appreciate it if you didn't, uh, you know how these misunderstandings get about. What? Well, the, well, the fact is that Myrtle simply doesn't like the theater. Mm. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> By the way, congratulations, yeah. Bird Boot. What? At the Theater Royal. Your entire review reproduced in neon. Oh, that old thing. Mm. You've seen it, of course. Well, I was passing. Mm, I, I definitely intend to take a second look once it has settled down. Oh, well, I, I happen to have a, a few color snapshots. I don't know if you oh, care to... Oh, uh... please, please, love to, love to. Yes. Yes. Mm, lovely. Mm, awfully sound. Mm. All I ever got was unforgettable on the poster for, uh... Uh... Uh, what was it? Oh, yes, yes, I know. Uh, wait, wait, was that you? I thought it was Higgs. Hmm. Hello, the drawing room of Lady Muldoon's country residence one morning in early spring. Hello, the draw... Who? Who do you wish to speak to? I'm afraid there's no one of that name here. This is all very mysterious, and I'm sure it's leading up to something. I hope nothing is amiss, but we, that is Lady Muldoon and our guests, are uh, cut off from the world, including Magnus, the wheelchair-ridden half-brother of a ladyship's husband, Lord Albert Muldoon, who went for a walk ten years ago and was never seen again. Should a stranger enter our midst, which I very much doubt, I will tell him you call. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Ah! <sighs> Hello there. I'm Simon Gascoigne. I hope you don't mind, but the door was open, so I wandered in. Uh, I'm a friend of Lady Muldoon's, the lady of the house, having made her acquaintance through a mutual friend, Felicity Cunningham, shortly after moving into this neighborhood just the other day. I'm Mrs. Drudge. I don't live in, but I pop in on my bicycle when the weather allows to help in the running of this charming, though somewhat isolated, Muldoon Manor. <laughs> Judging by the time you did well to get here before the high water cut us off for all practical purposes from the outside world. Yes, I took the shortcut over the cliffs and followed one of the old smugglers' paths through the treacherous swamps that surround this strangely inaccessible house. Yes, many visitors have remarked on the topographical quirk of the local strata, whereby there are no ways of getting from the manor, but there are ways of getting to it, where they're allowing. Yes. Well, I do say it is a lovely day. Ah, but the cuckoo beard is in bud, and there'll be fog before the sun hits Foster's Ridge. I say, it's wonderful how you 
You country people know weather. Know weather what? Yes, indeed. <laughs> ah, it is a bit foggy out there. The fog is very treacherous round here. It rolls off the sea without warning, shrouding the cliffs in a deadly mantle of blind man's buff. Uh, yes, I've heard it said. I've now no weekends when Moldy Manor, as this lovely old house is called, may as well have been floating on a pack of ice for all the good it would have done phoning the police. It was such a weekend as this that Lord Muldoon, who had lately brought his beautiful bride back to the home of his ancestors, walked out of this house ten years ago and was never seen again, nor his body ever found. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Poor Cynthia. His name was Albert. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> Poor Albert. But tell me, is Lady Muldoon about? Well, yes, I believe she's playing tennis on the lawn with Felicity Cunningham. Felicity Cunningham? A mutual friend, I believe you said. Happy chance. I'll tell him you're here. Oh, I can't really stay, as a matter of fact. Uh, please don't disturb them. I really should be going. <laughs> oh, but they will be disappointed. It's been quite some time since we had four for Pontoon Bridge. I don't play cards myself. So there is another guest then. Yes, Major Magnus, the crippled half-brother of Lord Albert Muldoon, who showed up out of the blue from Canada just the other day, completes the house party. I think I must be waiting for Higgs to die. <laughs> what? Half afraid that I will vanish when he does. <laughs> Hello? I wonder if it's the same for Puckeridge. Who? <laughs> Third string. Your stand-in? Does he wait for Higgs and I to write each other's obituaries? Uh, Does he dream? To whom do you wish to speak? What's he like? <laughs> Bitter. Uh, there's no one here by that name. No, as a critic. What's he like as a critic? <laughs> no one knows. But you must have the wrong number. There's always been me and Higgs. Hmm. Simon Gasconer. Hmm. It's not him, of course. What? I said it's not him. Well, well, who is it then? My guess is Magnus. In disguise, you mean? What? Uh, you mean he's Magnus in disguise? I don't think you're concentrating, Moon. But, but I thought no, you said... No, you keep chattering all about Higgs and Puckridge. What's the matter with you? I wonder if they talk about me. Here is another police message. Essex County Police are still searching in vain for the madman who is at large in the deadly marshes of the coastal region. Inspector Hound, who is masterminding the operation, is not available for comment, but it is widely believed that he has a secret plan. Meanwhile, police and volunteers are combing the swamps with megaphones, shouting, Don't be a madman! Give yourself up! That is the end of the police message! Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, yes, I should think my name is seldom off of Puckeridge's lips. <laughs> I mean, it's no life at all, a stand-in stand-in. Yes, yes. Higgs never gives me a second thought. I can tell by the way he nods. Revenge, of course. What? Jealousy. <laughs> oh, no, there's, there's nothing personal in it. A paranoid drug. It, it is merely that it is not enough to wax at another's wane, to, to be held on halt, on call, the temporary acting, to step in or not at all. For I am moon, continuous moon, moon in my own shoes, moon in April, June, September, and no member of the human race keeps warm my bit of space. Yes. Yes, I can tell by the way he nods. Quite mad, of course. What? Yes, the answer lies out there in the swamps. Oh. There's a skeleton in the closet is coming home to roost. Oh, yes. <coughs> Uh, already in the opening stages, we note the classical impact of the catalytic figure, uh, the outsider, plunging through to the depths of an ordered world to set up the, the, the disruptions, the shock waves, which, unless I am much mistaken, will, will strip these comfortable people, these, these crustaceans in the rock poor of society, strip them of their shells and leave them as the trembling raw meat, which at heart is all of us. But there is more to it than that. I agree. You... Keep your eye on Magnus. Mm -hmm. 
I say, Bird Boots. Oh, that's her. You. Yes, well, hello again. What are you doing here? Well, I... Uh, she's the... Uh, I'm sure you're surprised to see me. <laughs> Honestly, darling, you really are extraordinary. Yes, well, here I am. You must have been desperate to see me. I mean, I'm flattered, but couldn't it wait until I got back? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, there's something you don't know. What is it? Uh, look, about those things I said last night, uh, it may be that I got a bit carried away. <laughs> we both did. What are you trying to say? <gasps> I love another. I see. Look, I didn't make you any promises. I merely... You uh... don't have to say any more. Oh, I never meant to hurt you. Of all the nerves. Well, I... You philandering coward. Uh, let me explain. <laughs> this is hardly the term or place. You think you can barge in here wherever I am, whatever I happen to be doing. Look, I want you to know that my admiration for you is sincere. I don't want you to think I didn't mean those things I said. I'll kill you for this, Simon Gas. Coin! <laughs> it was her. I told you, straight to the top. Uh, no, no, I, I mean... The... Shh! Uh, yes? What is it? I've come to set up the car table, sir. Oh, I don't think I can stay. Oh, but Lady Muldoon will be disappointed. Does she know I'm here? Yes, sir. I just told her. It put her in quite a tizzy. Oh, really? Quite a tizzy, you say? Uh, now that I've cleared the air, I'm sure. Quite a tizzy, yes. Ha. Oh. Felicity, she's the one. Nonsense, red hair. Uh, no, no, I mean it was her. What was? Uh, that lady I saw you with last night. Are you suggesting that a critic of my moral integrity would trade his pen for a mess of pottage simply because in the course of my profession I happen to have struck up an acquaintance to, to have, that is, a, a warm regard, if you like, for a fellow toiler in the vineyard of grease paint. I find it simply intolerable to be pillified and I, I never implied... to find myself the object of uninformed malice, the petty slanders of little men, I, I'm sorry. to suggest that my good opinion in a journal of unimpeachable integrity should be at the disposal of a, the first coquette who gives me what I want, a ladies' man. Why, if my wife Myrtle and I, we've been together now for... Christ, who's that? Simon! Uh, Lady Muldoon. No, no, I mean, who is she? Cynthia! Don't say anything for a moment. Just hold me. Oh, oh, she's beautiful. A vision of elegant grace. A poem. I think she's got her mouth open. We can't go on meeting like this. Oh, we have nothing to be ashamed of. But darling, this is madness. Yes, yes, I am mad with love for you. Please remember where we are. Cynthia, I love you. Don't. I love Albert. Albert's dead. Do you understand me? Albert's dead! No, I will never give up hope! Let me go! We are not free! Cynthia, we were made for each other. <gasps> Had we only but met in time. You're a cat, Simon! You will use me, cast me aside, as you have cast aside so many others. No, Cynthia. You can make me a better person. You're Rufus! <gasps> so strong! <laughs> so cruel! Oh! <laughs> The son she never had, now projected into this handsome stranger. Lover, youth, vigor, the animal, the athlete as esthete, breaking down the barriers at the deepest levels of desire. By Jove, I think you're right. Her mouth is open. <gasps> Can't you see you're making a fool of yourself? I'll kill anyone who comes between us. Ah! <laughs> yes, what is it, Mrs. Stretch? I've climbed to close the windows, my lady. The fog is beginning to roll off the sea like deadly. Yes. Yes, you'd better. It looks as if we're in for one of those days. Are the cards ready? Yes, my lady. 
Would you tell Miss Cunningham we are waiting? Yes, my lady. And fetch the major down. Mm, I think I am coming down the stairs now. Frightfully sorry. How long have you been a pedestrian? As long as I could walk. Can you walk now? Oh, yes. Oh, thank God. Yes. Uh, Magnus, this is Simon Gayskin. What's he doing here? He's just turned up. Really? Oh! How do you like it here? Oh, I. Oh, I could stay forever. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh. So. You're still here. Of course he's still here. <gasps> We're going to play cards. There's no need to introduce you to, is there? For I recall that you, Simon, met me through Felicity, our mutual friend. Yes, Simon is an old friend, though not as old as you, Cynthia, dear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I haven't seen Felicity since... Uh... Last night. Indeed. Hmm. Uh, well, you deal Felicity. Simon the sofa. We partner Felicity Magnus against Simon. Will Simon and you always be partnered against me? Cynthia? <laughs> what do you mean, Magnus? You're a damned attractive woman, Cynthia. Please, please, remember Albert. Albert's <laughs> dead, <laughs> and you are still young. Surely he would have wished that you and I... No! Magnus, this is not to be. It's Gaston, isn't it? I'll kill him if he comes between us. Simon! Simon's going to get it. Right. Who starts? I do. Hmm. No bit. Did I hear you say you saw Felicity last night, Simon? Ah, oh, yes, did I? Did I? Uh, quite. Your turn. <laughs> I've had my turn, haven't I, Simon? Now it seems it's Cynthia's turn. Oh. <laughs> That's my trick, Felicity, dear. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, Simon. Uh, yes, I've heard it said. <laughs> So I hope you've not been cheating, Simon. No, Felicity. It's just that I hold the cards. Well done, <laughs> Simon. Oh. Oh. Strange how Simon appeared in the neighborhood from nowhere. We know so little about him. Hmm. Yes, it doesn't always pay to show your hand, Felicity. <laughs> right. Uh, Simon, it's your opening on the minor bid. <laughs> uh, hmm, let's see. I hear there's a dangerous madman on the loose, Simon. Yes. Yes, yes, uh, sorry. <laughs> hmm, I know it. Yes. Personally, I think he's been hiding. Out in the deserted cottage. On the cliffs. Uh, flush! <laughs> no! <laughs> Simon, your luck's in tonight. We shall see. The night is not over yet, Simon Guess. Coin! So you're the crippled half-brother of Lord Muldoon, who arrived out of the blue from Canada just the other day, are you? I say it has taken you some time to arrive. What did you do? Walk? Oh, oh I'm so frightfully sorry. 
Careful, spin around the rose garden. Spin the <laughs> No, Magnus, I must talk to Simon. My round, I think, Major. You think so? Yes, Major. I do. There's an old Canadian proverb handed down by the Blackfoot Indians which says, He who laughs last, laughs longest. Yes, I've heard it said. <clears throat> Simon! Well, I think I'll go and oil my gun. <laughs> Ah, yes. <laughs> I think Magnus suspects something. Uh, Prince Felicity. Simon, was there anything between you and Felicity? Oh, uh, no. No, no. It was a mere passing, fleeting thing. Oh, but now that I found you. If I find that you have been untrue to me, if I find that you have falsely seduced me from my dear husband, Albert, I will kill you, Simon. Sit around the old Vic in his opera cloak and passes me the tat. Do you believe in love at first sight? It's not that I think I'm a better critic. I feel my whole life changed. <laughs> I mean, I am, but it's not that. Well, the world will laugh at me, I know. It is not that they are much in the way of shoes to step into. Call me an infatuated old fool. They are not. Ah, oh, but I don't care. He is standing in my light, that Condemn is all. Condemn me. An almost continuous eclipse interrupted by the phenomenon of moonlight. I don't care, I'm a goner. And I dream. The the blue angel all over again. Of the day his temperature climbs to the top of his head. Ah, the sweet madness of love. The spasm on the stairs. Sweet myrtle, farewell. Dreaming of the stair he'll never reach. For I only live but once. Sometimes I dream that I've killed him. What? What? Ah, oh, yes, oh. yes, <clears throat> yes, um, uh, shaping up quite nicely. Uh, yes, uh, a beautiful production. Uh, collector's piece, oh, I yes. should say so. <clears throat> a very promising debut. Yes. I I'll put in a good word. Ah, oh, yes, it would be as hypocritical for me to withhold praise based on the grounds of personal feelings as to withhold censure. Uh, you're right, courageous. Yes, I, I, I know what they will say. There goes Bird Boot buttering up his legs. Oh, ignore them. But I rise above that. And the fact is, I genuinely consider her performance to be one of the summits in the range of contemporary theater. Trim buttocks, that's the word for her. Mm, the radiance, the inner sadness. Does she actually come across with it? Oh, well, the part is written is mere cipher, but she manages to make Cynthia a real person. Cynthia? And should she care to meet me over a drink, simply by way of uh, thanking me, as it were? Well, you fickle old bastard. <laughs> Are you suggesting? <clears throat> yes, well. Shaping up quite nicely, wouldn't you say? Oh, yes. <clears throat> A nice trichotomy of forces. Uh, one must reserve judgment, of course, for the confrontation, but I think it's pretty clear where we're heading. I agree. It's Magnus a mile off. What's Magnus a mile off? Well, if we knew that, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> Uh, let me at once say that it has a law, while at the same time avoiding eclat. Having said that, and I think it must be said, one is bound to ask, does this play know where it is going? Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The curtain will rise shortly. Well, it seems open and shut to me, Moon. Magnus is not what he pretends to be, and... He's got his next victim marked out. D does it, I repeat, declare its affiliations? Uh, there are moments, and I would not begrudge at this, where the play, if we can call it that, and I think on grounds we can, seems to be aligning itself uncompromisingly on the side of life. Je suis, it seems to be saying, et go soon. But is that enough? I think we are entitled to ask, for what, in fact, is this play concerned with? It is my belief that here we are concerned with what I have referred to elsewhere as the nature of identity. But is that enough? And, and here one is irresistibly reminded of Voltaire's cry, voila! But I think we are entitled to ask, where is God? <laughs> Who? 
God. God? I think we are entitled to ask. Same later that day. I'm sorry, there's no one of that name here. White or black, my lady? White, please. <laughs> White or black, miss? White, please. White or black, Major? White, please. Sugar, miss. Yes, please. Sugar, Major. Yes, please. Second act, however, fails to fulfill the promise. Biscuit, if you ask me, there's something funny going on. We interrupt our program for a special police message. The search for the dangerous madman who was on the loose in Essex has now narrowed to the immediate vicinity of Muldoon Manor. <laughs> police are hampered by the deadly swamps and the fog but believe that the madman spent last night in a deserted cottage on the cliffs. The public is advised to stick together and make sure none of their number is missing. That is the end of the police message. Oh, where's Simon? Who? Simon? Have you seen him? No. Have you, Magnus? No. Yes, there's something foreboding in the air. It's as if one of us... Oh, Felicity, the house is locked up tight. No one can get in, and the police are practically on the doorstep. I don't know, it's just a feeling. It's only the fog. Hound will never get through on a day like this. Fog. He means the inspector. Oh. Is he bringing a dog? Not that I know of. Never get through the swamps. Yes, I'm afraid the madman can show his hand in safety now. <gasps> What's that? It sounds like the cry of a gigantic hound. Poor devil. Lady Mo 
June. <sighs> yes? <laughs> I came as soon as I... as I could. Where shall I put my foghorn and swamp boots? Oh, Mrs. Strutch will take them out. Be prepared as the force's motto has it, eh, Inspector? How very resourceful! It takes more than a bit of weather to keep a policeman from his duty. Oh, <laughs> oh Inspector Hound, a Felicity Cunningham, and Major Magnus Modding. Good evening. Well, well so, sorry. sorry. No. Well, well <laughs> no, do go on. Thank you. Well, tell me all about it in your own words. Take your time. Begin at the beginning and don't leave anything out. I beg your pardon. Well, um, nothing. You are in safe hands now. I hope you haven't touched anything. I'm afraid I don't understand. <clears throat> I'm Inspector Hound. Yes! Well, what's it all about? I really have no idea. How did it begin? A what? The thing. A what thing? The trouble. There hasn't been any trouble. Didn't you phone the police? No, I didn't. What for? I see. Well, this puts me in a very difficult position. I'll just be getting along now. Uh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, no, it's perfectly all right. Uh, thank you so much for coming. No, not at all. You never know when there might have been a serious matter. A, a drink? Oh, more serious than that even. Drink before you go. No, thank you. I do hope you find him. Find who? Not him out with it. <laughs> I, I thought you were looking for lunatic. What do you know about that? It was on the radio. Was it indeed? Well, that's what I hear about, really. I didn't want to mention it before, because I didn't know how much you knew. No point in causing unnecessary bank, even with a murderer in our midst. <gasps> murderer, did you say? <gasps> Aha, so that was not on the radio. Whom has he murdered, Inspector? Perhaps no one yet. Let us hope we are in time. You believe he is in our midst, Inspector? I do. If any one of you has recently encountered a youngish, good-looking fellow in a smart suit, white shirt, Hatless. Someone who's well spoken. Someone claiming to have recently moved into the neighborhood. Someone who on the surface seems as sane, as sane as you or I. Then now is the time to speak. I... Don't interrupt. Inspector. Very well. No, Felicity. Oh. Please, Lady Muldoon, we are all in this together. I must ask you to put yourself completely in my heart. <gasps> I can't, Inspector! I love Albert! I don't think you quite grasp my meaning. Is one of us in danger, Inspector? Didn't it strike you as odd that on his escape, the madman made a beeline for Muldoon <laughs> Manor? It is my guess that he bears a deep-seated grudge against someone in this very house. Lady Muldoon, where is your husband? My husband? <gasps> you don't mean! I don't know. But I have reason to believe that one of you is the real McCoy. <gasps> the real what? William Herbert. 
William Herbert McCoy, who as a young man, meeting the madman on the streets and being solicited for sixpence a cup of tea, did reply, Why don't you do a decent day's work, you shifty old bag of horse manure? In Canada all those many years ago, our madman was a mere boy at the time. But he never forgot that insult and thenceforth carried out in his heart the promise of revenge. Is there anything that you have forgotten to tell me? <gasps> <gasps> so the madman has struck. Oh, it's horrible, horrible. Yes, it's just as I've predicted. Now you know the sort of man you are protecting. <gasps> That description has indeed appeared in our midst. Simon Guess. Coin! Oh, he had charm, I'll give him that, and he took me in completely. I'm afraid I made a fool of myself over <laughs> him, and so did Cynthia. Where is he now? He must be around the house. He couldn't get away in these conditions. You're right. Fear not, Lady Muldoon. I shall apprehend the man who killed your husband. My husband? I don't understand. Everything points to Simon Gas Station. <laughs> but who's that? Your husband. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I tell you, it's not. Are you sure? For goodness sake! Well, then who's that? I don't know. Anybody? I've never seen him before. Quite unlike anybody I've ever met. I see. Yeah, I seem to have made a terrible mistake. Lady Muldoon, I do apologize. But what are we going to do? <laughs> I'll phone the police! But you are the police! Well, thank God I'm here! The lines have been cut. <gasps> oh. You mean? Yes, we are cut off from the world and in grave <gasps> danger. You mean? Yes. <gasps> I think the killer will strike again. You mean? Yes. <gasps> One of us ordinary mortals thrown together by fate and cut off from the elements is the murderer. <gasps> He must be found. Search the house! Anyone about? Funny. This is where Simon gets it. Simon Guest Pumpy, I presume. <laughs> Rough justice even for a killer. Unless, unless we assume that the body could not have been lying here when Simon Guest Kenny came into the house. But there <gasps> is your answer. And now, who killed Simon Guest Pricey? <laughs> And why? 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 Why not? Exactly. Good riddance. Yes, yes, I, I should think getting away with murder must be quite easy given one's motive is sufficiently inscrutable. Yeah, this fickle young puppy was deceiving her right, left, and center. Of course, I'd still have Puckridge behind me. Well, she needs someone steadier, more mature. And if I could, so could he. Yes, I know of a very nice hotel, very discreet, run by a man of the world. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Breakfast served in one's room and no questions asked. Does Puckridge dream of me? Hello, what's happened? What? 
Oh, oh, oh yes. <coughs> uh, uh, what do you make of it so far? Oh, yeah, well, <clears throat> it is at this point that the play for me comes alive. The groundwork has been well and truly laid, and the author has taken the trouble to study from the masters of the genre, few of which will doubt his ability to resolve it with a startling denouement, for that is what it so far lacks, but it has a beginning, a middle, and no doubt it will prove to have an end. For this, let us give thanks, and double thanks for a, double, double thanks for a good clean show without a trace of smut, but all this would be for nothing were it not for a performance which I consider to be the summit of the range of contemporary theatre in what is possibly the finest Cynthia since the war. If we examine this more closely, and I think close examination is the least bit this play deserves, I think that we will find that within this austere framework of what seems on one level to be a country house weekend, and what a useful symbol that is, I think that we will find that the author has given us Yes, yes, I will go so far. He has given us the human condition. More talent in her little finger. An uncanny ear that might have belonged to a Van Gogh. A public scandal that the Queen has thus far neglected. Faced as we are with such ubiquitous obliquity, it is hard. It is hard indeed, and therefore I will not attempt to refrain from invoking the names of Sartre, Shakespeare, Pinero, Pirandello, Dante, and Dorothy L. Sayers. A rattling good evening out, I was held. Yes. Hard still if it is pos Hard still if it is possible to be Neither do I Neither do I find it easy to Dante and Dorothy L. Sayers. Hello! What? Sake, Myrtle, I told you never to film me at work. <laughs> what? No, last night? Oh, good God, woman, this is hardly the time to... I took her to dinner simply by way of keeping au fait with the world of the paint and the motley. Yes, yes, I promise. Yes, I do. Yes. I said yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and you are mine too, Myrtle, darling. No. I, I can't. But I'm not alone. No, she's not. Uh, all right. I love your little pink ears and you're my own fluffy bunny boo. Now, for God's sake, goodbye, Myrtle. Darling, you really are extraordinary. Yes, well, here I am. You must have been desperate to see me. I mean, I'm flattered, but couldn't it wait until I got back? Uh, no, 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 you got it all wrong. <laughs> what is it? A and about last night. Uh, perhaps I gave you the wrong impression. Got carried away a bit, perhaps. What are you trying to say? <gasps> I, I, I want to call it off. <laughs> I see. But I didn't promise anything, and the, and the fact is, I have my reputation. People do talk. You don't have to say any more. And my wife, too. I don't know how she got to hear of it. Of all the nerve! I'm sorry, uh, but I, the fact is, I didn't mean it this way. You philandering coward! But, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but, but, but I want you to know that I truly meant those things I said. Oh, yes, it uh, shows brilliant promise. I shall say so. I'll kill you for this, Simon Gas! Coin! <laughs> Good God. Come to set up the card table, sir. I can't stay for a game of cards. Oh, but Lady Muldoon will be disappointed. Oh, you mean, you mean she wants to meet me? Yes, sir. I just told her. It put her in quite a tizzy. Yes, well, a man of my influence is nothing to be sneezed at. Yes, I suppose I have some small name for the making of reputations. <laughs> Quite a tizzy, she says, yes. <laughs> My boot! What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Nothing! Stop making an ass of yourself. Come sit down! Oh, I know what you're going to say, but the fact is, I genuinely consider her performance to be one of the summits. Darling! Ah, 
Good evening. I, I, I just wanted to say that I genuinely consider your performance... Don't to... say anything for a moment. Just hold me. <laughs> All right. Uh, let us throw off the hollow pretense of the gimcrack codes we live by. Darling, from the first moment I saw you, I felt my whole life changing. We can't go on meeting like this. Oh, I am not ashamed to proclaim nightly my love for you. But, but, but fortunately, that won't be necessary. I know of a very nice hotel, discreet, run by a man of the world. But, darling, this is madness. Yes, I am mad with love for you. Please, remember where we are. <laughs> Oh, oh, then I don't care what they think. I, I love you. Don't! I love Albert. What? Don't you understand? Albert's dead. Don't no. you understand me? I will never give up hope. We'll let me go. We are not free. Oh, what? Oh, Myrtle. Myrtle, no, no. She means nothing to me. Nothing. No, she's all cocoa and blue fur nylon slippers. No, there's not a... <laughs> Not a spark of creative genius in her whole slumping, knee-length, knickered body. Oh. You're a cat, Simon! You will use me and cast me aside as you have cast aside so many others! Oh, Cynthia... Cynthia, now that I've found you... You're ruthless! <gasps> so strong! <laughs> so cruel! <laughs> Have you taken leave of your tiny mind? Stop! Can't you see I'm making a fool of you now? She's right. Well, you stay out of this! Ah! Oh. Yes, what is it, Mrs. Drudge? I've come to close the windows, my lady. The fog is beginning to roll off the sea like... Yes. Yes, you'd better. <laughs> Look, they've got your number. I, I don't I'll, see... I'll, I'll, I'll be back in my own time, thank you very much. It's the finish of you, I suppose you know. If oh, you keep... look, look, I don't need your two-penny club street prognostications. I have found something bigger than I know. <laughs> if only it were Higgs. And fetch the major down. I think I hear him coming down the stairs now. give the uh, young up-and-comers the benefit of my, uh, uh, well, she lacks uh, technique as yet. Last night? No, no, I'm not talking about last night. Indeed. <laughs> well, you deal Felicity, Simon, so far. Will you partner Felicity Magnus against Simon? Do you see that? He tried to kill me. I told you it was Magnus. Not that it is Magnus. Uh, who did it, you mean? What? Uh, you mean it's not Magnus who did it? Oh, I don't think you're concentrating, Moon. The fact is staring you in the face. He's after Cynthia for one. It's Gaston, isn't it? Over my dead body. And he comes between us. For God's sake, Bud, would sit down. Simon! She needs me. I can't. I have to make up a fool. Right. Who starts? I do. I'll double my bluff and place my holding on South Queen. Did I hear you say you saw Felicity last night, Simon? Uh, 
Uh, Pay uh, twenty ones or trump my contract. <laughs> Cynthia's turn. Oh. <laughs> I'll trump your contract with five dummy no trumps there, and I'll move Westbrook for the rebid with the Banco Ruffle second trick there. Simon? Could you do that again? <laughs> I'll rough your dummy five no big trumps there, and I'll support your rebid for the solo rough and the Banco rough for the dummy trick there. Mm. And I call your bluff! Mm. Oh, well done, Simon! Strange how Simon appeared in the neighborhood from nowhere. We know so little about him. Right. Uh, Simon, it's your opening on the minor bit. Hmm, let's see. I think I'll overbid the spade convention with two dot trumps and King Gambit's offered there. And West Dummy fit double to Queen's Bishop for that. <laughs> Favour jour rien ne va plus, rouge et noir. <laughs> Simon. And I call your bluff. I melt. I huff. I run. I bluff. Twist. Bust. Check. Snap. How's that? Not out. Double shot. Bingo. <laughs> In tonight. Mm. <laughs> we shall see. The night is not over yet, Simon Guess. Coin! <laughs> ah, red herring. Smell it a mile off. Yeah, she's clean as a whistle. Seen it a thousand times. I've seen you before too, though, haven't I? Yes. Careful spin around the rose garden. Thin the arm. <laughs> no, Marcus, I must talk to Simon. There's nothing for you there, you know. You think so? Oh, yes, yeah, she knows which side her bread is buttered. I'm not a man without a certain influence among those who would reap the limelight. Yes, yeah, she's not going to throw me over for a heavily disguised cripple. There's an old Canadian prop. Don't give me that. I've tumbled you straight from the start. Yes, you chaps think you're so clever. But sooner or later, you always make a mistake. Incidentally, where was it that I've seen you? You look... <coughs> Simon! Well, I think I'll go and oil my gun. Double it! I've seen it a thousand times. <laughs> I think Magnus suspects something. <gasps> and Felicity. Simon, was there anything between you and Felicity? No, no, no. That's all over now. I'm going to get flattered her over a drink. Oh, I told her she'd go far. That's a little thing, you know. Oh, my dear, the fuss has been made over a simple flirtation. If I find that you have falsely seduced me from my dear husband, Albert, I will kill you, Simon Gatesco! <laughs> Thanks, Bert, but pull yourself together! I know, I can't help myself! Uh, what do you think you're doing? You're turning it into a complete farce! Oh, oh, but I can't live without her! Oh, I'll have to give up my position, of course. Oh, but I, I don't care. I'm a goner. But think of your family, your friends, your, your high standing in the world of letters! I, I say, Bert, but what are you doing? Uh, leave it alone! Come sit down! What's the matter with you? It's Higgs. What? It's Higgs. Uh, don't, don't be silly. I tell you, it's Higgs. I, d I don't understand. He's dead. Dead? But who would want to... He must have been lying there all the time. Uh, who killed Higgs? But, but what's he doing here? I, I was supposed to be standing in tonight. So it's me and Puckridge now. Ooh. But I swear, I swear, I didn't... My God. So that was it. Moon, now I see. I, I swear, I didn't... Now, at last, I see it all! Bad boat! Oh, my God! What happened, Inspector? He's dead.
dead. That's a bit rough, isn't it? A bit extreme. He was a fickle old ba- Who did this? And why? To say that it lacks pace, point, focus, interest, drama, wit, or originality, is simply to say that it is not my cup of tea. I'm sorry to be blunt, but there's no getting away from it. It lacks pace, a complete rag bag. Hysteria is no substitute for eclat. It lacks a lawn. Some of the actors seem to have given up acting altogether. I'm not prude, but I fail to see any reason for the shower of filth and sexual illusion foisted onto an unsuspecting public in the guise of modernity at any cost. Well, Inspector, is this your man? Yes, yes. It's Simon. Yes, yes. Or... Is this some kind of a joke? If it is, Inspector, it's in very poor taste. All right. I'm going to find out who did this. I want everyone to go to the positions we in when the shot was fired. And no one will leave the room. I think we all had the opportunity to fire the shot, Inspector. I am not But which of us would want to? Perhaps you, Major Magnus. <laughs> Why should I want to kill him? Because he was on to you. Yes, yes, he tumbled you right from the start. And you shot him just when he was about to reveal that you killed this chap. But what motive would there be for killing him? Who is this chap? <laughs> Inspector? I don't know. Quite unlike anybody I've ever met. Well, now. Inspector. Yes, yes, what is it, dear lady? Happening to enter the room earlier in the day to close the windows, I chanced to overhear a remark made by the deceased Simon Gascoigne to her ladyship, viz. I will kill anyone who comes between us. <gasps> ah, that's it then. This chap was obviously killed by... Uh, uh, Simon! Uh, but he didn't come between us. And who then killed Simon? Subsequent to that reported remark, I also chanced to be in earshot of a remark made by Lady Muldoon. To the deceased, to the effect, I will kill you for the Simon Gaze Cone! I'm so glad you mentioned it. It is from these chance remarks that we in the force built up our complete picture before moving in to make the arrest. And I must warn you, Lady Muldoon, that anything you say will be- Yes! I hate this Simon Gayscone, for he has been a thrall. But I didn't kill him. Ooh. Prior to that reported remark, Inspector, I also chanced to be in a shot of a remark made by Miss Cunningham. No doubt in the heat of the moment, but it's stuck in my mind as these things do, viz, I will kill you for this Simon Gas coin. <laughs> ah, that's it then, the final piece of the jigsaw. I think I am now in a position to reveal the mystery. <laughs> uh, this man was obviously McCoy, the Canadian who, meeting Gascoigne in the street and being solicited for a sixpence for a toffee apple, smacked him across the ear with the cry, how's that for a grudge to have you sniveling little work shy? All those many years ago, Gascoigne bided his time tracking McCoy down to this very house, having, on the way, met a young, ambitious girl from the provinces. He was charming, persuasive, told her I have no doubt that she would go straight to the top, and she, flattered by his sophistications, taken in by his promises to see her all right on the night, gave in to his simple desires. Perhaps she loved him. We shall never know. But in the very hour of her promised triumph, his eye fell on another. Yes, I refer to Lady Cynthia Muldoon. <gasps> From the very moment he caught sight of her, there was no other woman for him. He was caught in a spell, willing to sacrifice anything for her. 
Even you! <gasps> you, Felicity Cunningham! It was only today, unexpectedly finding him here, that you learned the truth. There was a bitter argument which ended with your promise to kill him. A promise that you carried out in this very room at your first opportunity. And I must warn you that anything you say really doesn't make any sense. Ooh. <laughs> uh, not at first glance, perhaps. Could not McCoy have been killed by the same person who killed Simon? But why would any of us want to kill a perfect stranger? Perhaps he was not a stranger to one of us. But uh, so Simon was the madman, wasn't he? We only have your word for that, Inspector. We only have your word for a lot of things. For instance, McCoy. Who is he? Is his name McCoy? Is there any truth to that fantastic and implausible tale of the insult inflicted on the Canadian streets? Or is there something else? Something quite unknown to us behind all this? Suppose for a moment that the madman, having killed this unknown stranger for private and inscrutable reasons of his own, was disturbed before he could dispose of the body. So, having cut the telephone wires, he decided to return to the scene of the crime, masquerading as Police Inspector Howe! <gasps> but... Uh, I'm not mad. I'm almost sure I'm not mad. Only to discover that in the house was a man, Simon Gascon, who recognized the corpse as a man against whom you had held a deep-seated grudge. But, but I swear, I didn't kill him. I, 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 I put it to you. Are you the real Inspector Howe? You know damn well I'm not! I thought as much. But I, I only dreamed. S sometimes I, I dreamed, but I, I wouldn't... So it was you! The madman! The killer! Oh, it's a horrible, horrible! The stranger in our midst! Yes! We had a shrewd suspicion he would turn up here, and he walked right into the trap. What trap? I am not the real Magnus Muldoon. It was a mere subterfuge. And I now reveal myself as... <gasps> you mean? Yes. I am the real Inspector Hound. <gasps> Stand where you are or shoot! Puckeridge, you, you killed Higgs, and Bud will try to tell me that it was Stop. you- Stop! In the name of the law. <laughs> I've wasted a long time for this moment. So, you are the real Inspector Howe. Not only that, I've been leading a double life, at least. You mean? Yes! It's been ten long years, but don't you recognize me? You mean? Yes! It is I, Albert, <gasps> who'd lost his memory and joined the police force, rising by merit to rank of inspector, his past blotted out until fate cast him back into the home he left behind. Back to the beautiful woman he brought here <laughs> as his girlish bride. In short, my darling, my memory has returned, and your long wait is over. Oh, Albert! Puckeridge! You cunning bastard! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 